Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and for this video we're going to get a little bit more personal. I want to talk about one of my own armies, which is a Legio Kratos force for the game Adeptus Titanicus. Now I've loved Epic and Titanicus since the end of the 90s. I used to play it tons and all the different iterations, and when it came back a few years ago I was over the moon and jumped straight in. At the end of 2019, I gave away my first Titanicus Force for the Heresy Against DMD raffle. So when 2020 rolled around and lockdown and all the rest of it, this was the first army that I put brush to paint or paint to model on. And I really, really enjoyed it. I've written a great big long tutorial for it on Patreon. But for this video, I wanted to talk about it a little bit more, as well as include a little video tutorial of how I went about painting the main armour colour. So I hope you enjoy it. I was very fortunate that Games Workshop reached out and sent me an early copy of the new Warmaster Titan to paint up. As soon as I got it, no questions, it was getting added into the Krytos Force. And when I opened up the box and saw all the different options you got, I was even more excited. The fact that I could tweak it around, make the weapons fit a bit more of that Siege Scorched Earth theme so I couldn't wait to get cracking. As a build, it was fantastic fun. Um, I think the engineering on these Titanicus models is just getting better and better, and the Warbringer and then the Warmaster after it have just been an absolute dream to build. So if you like those more sort of old school model kits, a lot more parts, um, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, and you get three complete heads in it, which is a bit random, um, but good fun to try out different schemes on if you want, or magnetize it if you really want to go down that route. With regards to how I was going to paint it, I'd already done uh, a guide on our Patreon last year when I did the main Krytos Force, so it was very helpful just to be able to pull that PDF up and be able to match the rest of the work that I'd done. It's worth noting that this Krytos army is very much for gaming with, so that means it's going to get handled a lot and I'm going to be using it in places where the lighting really isn't brilliant. So lots of concessions needed to be made. Really, my only goal was get the main colours right, get the weathering in and the battle damage in scale, and make it look as much like the feeling that I get from looking at the, the artwork in the various Titanicus books. Get, get that feeling that gives me. So that was what I went about with. I thought, just to chuck in a little tutorial, I'd go over how I do the main armour panels. There's a lot more detail to the Titan, obviously, and as I say, there's about an 80-odd page PDF I've done uh, of that. So if you fancy checking that out, check out the Patreon. But let's crack on with how I went about doing the green armour. Over a black primer, I'm just giving a very simple pre-shade using Tamiya Flat White. Spraying this at 25 PSI, I've thinned it four or five drops of Tamiya X20A thinner to paint. And I'm just building it up until I get a nice strong central white highlight on there. I didn't worry too much about doing fancy transitions and stuff with the pre-shades for the Titans. Once that's ready, I started to spray GW Lupercal Green into the shadows. Now this is an air paint, as is the next paint I use. I didn't need to thin my pot of it very much, maybe one drop of thinner to every two drops of paint, something like that. I'm still spraying 25 PSI using our Harder and Steambeck Signature Series Infinity. And that comes with a 0.4mm needle nozzle in it. So a couple of coats of that, just to get that colour in the shadow. And then the main armour colour, GW Sons of Horrors Green. Again, this is an air paint. It took me a long time to figure out what the right green was for this project. Uh, and in the end, it turned out to be pretty simple. And I was able to use... Uh, a couple of GW greens for the green. I was able to use Evil um, Wild Rider Red for the red-orange colour as well. So it's pretty nice and e easy to get hold of those paints. My Sons of Horus green was very, very thin. Uh, probably had to apply a few too many layers there, but we got there in the end. And then once it was dry, I gave it one thin coat of polyurethane gloss. And that's just to give me a, a nice smooth surface to do this next stage with. It's nothing to do with protecting the paint or anything. So I grabbed some Abtalon 502 Ghost Grey and then Artist Oil Colour Payne's Grey and Titanium White. And I'm going to use these to slightly alter the green colour that I've got on the panel. 
It's going to alter the colour, but it's also going to give us a nice bit of weathering or distressing, whatever you want to call it. So first up, this is just the neat oil off that little cardboard palette. I'm going to apply the Ghost Grey. You can see this is really pretty close in colour to the Sons of Horror screen. Then I'm adding a few dots with the Payne's Grey. This is a very dark grey colour. And I'm putting the majority of them down where the, sh the shadows are on this panel. But I'll also put a couple more just round and about. And this technique's known as oil paint rendering or dot rendering. I forgot the uh, centre of the eye there was the green, so I've just gone back in there. And then I'm going to use some white as well. Now, the lighter coloured oils are very, very powerful when you're doing this technique. So you don't need as much of them as the other ones. Now I'll take a last wide flat brush and I've dipped it in Sansador thinner. There's way too much thinner on that brush, so I've touched it off there and this is the amount you're looking for. So just a little bit as we touch the cardboard. I don't want to wash this oil away, I just want to move it around. Now gently, I'm working top to bottom, just dragging the paint down. Then we go back and now I just start to work it up and down, so vertically up and down the panel. As I say, we're not looking to remove the paint, just looking to work it into the surface and it will leave us some of these nice streaks. This sort of faded out, weather beaten effect to the armour. Now leave that to dry, or you can use a hairdryer if you want. Now I'm going to mix up a lighter version of that grey, or the ghost, ghost grey colour. So I'm just adding a little bit of white in there. Adding a little bit of the Sansador thinner. And I want it wet enough so that I can flick this onto the model. But I don't want it so wet that it flicks off really, really easily and covers the entire panel in one go. So I do a few little practices on the cardboard palette first. And this is just to represent a little bit of chipping. So you could have used a sponge for this. You could just go in and paint these all individually if you wanted. This is quite a fun way of chipping up quite a large area quite quickly. And again, if you don't like it, you just wipe it off. And providing that layer underneath that we previously painted is dry, you're not going to remove it if you're just gentle. Now because I want to paint the trim and whatnot, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of satin varnish. This is just because acrylic paints sometimes don't paint over uh, oils terribly well. For the trim on my Titans, I've chosen to base coat it in Scale 75 Decayed Metal. Again, if you've seen any of my videos, there's a good chance this paint turns up in it. I like to black out all the areas of trim on my uh, Titans first. I think it gives me better definition and separation. Uh, I'm sure there are other ways you can go about it. This is the way I went about it on mine. And anybody who's painted a Titan is well aware that painting the trim is a significant amount of time you're going to be spending with your model. Then the main gold colour is Scale 75 Elven Gold. Let's say this is army painting, so I don't need to worry hugely. If I had a significant change in direction on a piece of the trim, then I would leave that the shadow area just the pure decayed metal. But on the uh, shoulder pad here, I didn't really need to. Now I'm going to go in and paint a few more chips. I'm using the acrylic paint here, so the Sons of Horus Green, and I've mixed in a little bit of Vallejo model colour, pale blue, but you could mix in any off-white would be absolutely fine, just to lighten it up. It's more or less the same colour as that oil mix that we flicked on. And I've painted in some scratches here, and I'm going to do some larger areas of damage around where the trim meets the armour. And then if I've got any little groups of those dots I sprayed on earlier that are really quite close together, I'm just going to join them up and create some nice irregular bits of damage. So 
I find this a really chilled out stage of painting. I really enjoy doing it and I do it on most of my models. I'm not going to do all the army painting techniques that I'll often talk about in the videos on here. This is just how I've painted my army. Now I've taken a dark brown colour, in this case a Panzerace's Dark Rust, but any dark ready brown colour would do. And effectively I'm going to fill in those areas that I've painted with the light green mix, leaving just a tiny little bit of that showing. What that helps to create is this idea of depth to the damage. So that light area effectively becomes the light catching the edges of where uh, an object or something has, has gone in and, and damaged the armour and actually dented it. You can do it on a few of the little dots. You can just work your way around. And if there's an area that you think needs a bit more, just go straight in with the brown, it's fine. They don't all need to have the highlights on. I like to do this stage after the trim because if I have accidentally got a bit of paint on the armour panel, I can just cover it up at this stage with the brown, no problems. Final step now is I take a little bit of burnt umber, uh, neat, so no dilution. I'm just going to dot this on some of the larger areas of damage. And at this stage you can create a few more scratches and chips with it too, if you want. I wanted to touch a rust, so I grabbed some Artisaur Colour Burnt Sienna as well. Just applied this much more sparingly. And I'm going to take that wide flat brush that we used earlier, exactly the same amount of thinner, so the Sandstore Thinner, any odourless mineral spirit should be absolutely fine. And we can do exactly what we did before when we dragged the streaks up and down, except this time we want to drag them once, pretty much once, and we're done. As you can see it's a really quick way for us to get a bunch of streaks done on this panel. This was a really good sort of time versus results stage for this armour. I found with the trim taking so long on these models I had to make everything as efficient as possible, all the other stuff that I was doing as efficient as possible, but I knew the armour was the thing that mattered, so I didn't mind spending a little bit of extra time on it. I'm really tempted to maybe pick a Titan up and, and do it as a, a sort of showcase level. I'm quite tempted by that new Metallica scheme, I think that looks really cool, I might give that a go. Uh, and here I'm just giving the gold uh, a, quite a heavy wash with the burnt umber oil. So this is a little bit of panel lining too. And if you get too much on there, just put some of the thinner on your brush. And just move it around and dilute it down a little bit on the model. Once that's dry, usually leave that overnight if I can. I'm just going to grab a little bit of Amber Alchemy by Scale 75. Just do a little bit of sort of stippled edge highlighting, a few little scratches along the gold. And that's it for the green armour panels. For the white, I just used a grey base and then Tamiya white on top. And I used the Payne's grey and white to do the little uh, oil filtering on it just left off the ghost grey. And as I say, the very occasional red panel that I did is just GW Evil Sun's uh, Wild Rider Red, sorry, just straight over a, a black and grey pre-shade. It was nice to be able to do a Titan almost a year on from when I finished the last one and have it match so closely to the rest of the force. This is one of those things that having army painting techniques written down uh, I'm not suggesting you go out and do a goodness knows how many page PDF document on it, but just keep a notepad, maybe even keep a couple of photos if there's particularly important step-by-steps. It's just a really useful way to be able to go back to a project and, and match things in as best as you can. One thing I did want to shout out, I absolutely love the nameplates on the bases. I think a lot of people who play Titanicus love going on the old Google English to Latin translate or ancient Greek translate or whatever and coming up with some fun names for their titans. All of these nameplates are from Versatile Terrain. They're the original nameplate place 
the quality is outstanding, the service is outstanding. They're a fantastic company. I really recommend you go and support them. So if you do want any bases for things like Titans or Blood Bowl or Necromunda or a few mad bastards have done their entire 40k armies I've seen with, with the nameplates on them. But they're fantastic. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with, with how they sort of framed the Titans for me. And I used a few of the really old epic 40k plastic ruins on the bases just to try and help give a little bit of scale. I suppose the only thing really on these that isn't just out the box it's a little bit of reposing um, but is the banners for the banners on mine i used the lengths of chain i cut from things like uh, already existing plastic chains on different models i used a paper clip as the cross piece and then i just used very very thin brass sheet i cut that out uh, i measured it out i looked at the color plates i'd worked out that the banners were usually somewhere around the length of the shin uh, and sort of went with that translated those measurements um, I really like them they were a little bit rushed and in hindsight if I was to do a showpiece one I think I would probably use a small brass chain and sculpt it uh, with a bit more detail but I think for gaming there I really like them I think they, they elevate the models um, without taking an, an inordinate amount of time to do what am I going to do with the rest of this army well I'd like to round out my light mana pull options, so I've got a couple more Warhounds ready to go on the desk in front of me, and I've got a really cool conversion idea uh, built up for my Princeps Signores, which I'm going to have in a, in a Reaver. And then of course the temptation is to add a couple more Reavers, so that could go full Corsair, and I do have another Warbringer, and you can run a couple of those cool mana pulls, which I think is probably quite Kratos themed. And then the biggie there is then do I add in See, I was going to have a Warlord as the centerpiece, but now I've got a Warmaster, so now do I add three Warlords in and do, a, a, you know, Myrmidon options or Extermagus options? Or do I maybe do that Myrmidon uh, or, or Extermagus Manipul as, as my showpiece one? Not sure. I think a lot's going to pretend, uh, depend on what decals I can get hold of. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little look through one of my personal projects. I really enjoyed watching Andy's video about his Lumineth the other week and uh, we had some good reaction to that so I thought you could see my personal hobby as well. Uh, we love doing tutorials for you guys obviously but we are at the heart of it just massively keen hobbyists as well uh, and it's nice to be able to share this with you on, on YouTube a bit. As I say if you like what you see there's a bunch more of this sort of stuff on Patreon from both me and Andy across all sorts of game systems uh, and different scales and miniatures as well. If you'd like to see more on specialist game stuff, let me know in the comments. Big fan of Necromunda, uh, quite keen to get into Aeronautica Imperialis as well, and obviously the, the glory that is Horus Heresy. I hope you're all keeping well, and as usual, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and if you're not already, subscribe. It really, really helps us out. But most importantly, if you've enjoyed it, tell your mates. Maybe they'll get a kick out of it as well. And I'll see you next time.